Hello everyone, this is Francis from the Truth Loop Consulting. Today we'll be discussing about the anticipated start date and anticipated finish date in Primavera P6. The anticipated start date in Primavera P6 is the start date of a project, an EPS node or AWBS level. Please note that it's manually entered and not affected by scheduling. An anticipated start date cannot be entered on an activity level. But I will show you today the relationship between that and um, activity start and finish date. Also, the anticipated finish date is the expected finish date of the project, the EPS node or the WABS level. It's also manually entered and is not affected by scheduling. An anticipated finish date cannot be entered on an activity level. But also, I will show you uh, how that relates to an activity in Primavera P6. So let's go to the Primavera P6 platform. We're now on uh, Primavera P6 platform. Uh, let me create a new uh, dummy project. So we click on flat file, new. So that's our project. I want to select um, my EPS um, project structure for this new project. See, uh, I would like to put it on, on the training. So you click on training. The next name, you know your, your project. Copy and paste this here. Next, uh, this is our start date. I won't feel a finish date now. Today is the 4th of May, so that's our date to date. Um, you can select a, a responsible manager. I will leave it as it is. I will leave everything as it is. Congratulations, so we've created our project. So this is the new project we've just created. As you can see, we've not got any um, bar in the Gantt chart area. Um, that's because we've not got any activity in the program and we've not got any details on the anticipated start and finish date. So let's now try um, and fill this date out. Note that the most finished by date is empty, the finished date is empty, the actual finish, the actual start, all those are empty. The only part that's filled at the moment now is the 4th of May on the project plan start and the uh, the 4th of May on the day to date. So let me say the anticipated um, start date is on the 1st of June. And the anticipated finish date of, um, is on the um, let me see 28th of this um, September. See what happens here. Can you see? So the Gantt is shown. So this is um, usually um, useful when um, you've just you know started putting programs together or you've just started putting different project under the same WBS structure together and you want to see how they all fit into the overall uh, corporate strategy. So uh, as you can see now, because I've got an expected finish date here, the finish date has been uh, populated automatically. Okay, so let's now see what uh, um, the relationship this has on the activity in the program. So let me open this project. As you can see on this project, we've not got any um, any activity. So I'll create an activity. I'll name it activity one. So as you can see, activity one. Let's go. Um, let me give it a ten days duration. So starting on the first of May and finishing on the eleventh of May. Let me see the gun. So that's the gun here in the activity level. So because we've got a start and finish days of an activity in our project, let's see what happens to the anticipated start and finish date. Can you see it's disappeared? It's, it's been override by the actual activity finish date, which is the 11th of May. You see, so it disappeared. But if you go back to your project and delete this activity, let's delete it, you go back, can you see? It appears again. So if you have two or more projects, you can see how it all fits in together in the overall B straight um, corporate structure. And also um, it helps when you're preparing your program using a rolling wave uh, method.